we came to church, so that means we have our Bibles. Amen? Amen. Take your Bibles out. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 16 to 26. And we're in, in, in 2017, so even if you don't have the book, you have a device. Amen? I prefer the book, but use a device if you don't have a book. But we need to give the word today. Amen? Remember verses from Jeremiah 6, 16 to 26? We will read verses 16 and 17 together. And it reads, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Also I set watchmen over you, Hark, say, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. The topic of the sermon today is the old paths, the good way. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your blessing, the blessing of life. And we thank you for bringing us into your house today. Father, I ask that you'll forgive us from all our sins. I ask, Father, that you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, I ask that you'll prepare all our hearts to hear you speak to us. Father, I ask that my voice will not be heard. I ask, Father, that I will not be seen. I ask, only, O Father, that you will speak to all of us today. Father, that which we are in need of granted to us. Lord, those things that we did not think we needed, but you know that we need, grant it to us. Father, I ask that you will cause angels that excel in strength to come by here, to abide with us, to go through this place and beat back the powers of darkness. Let the devil have no influence here so that we can hear you speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Israel had real problems. And you know, it seems like that's the, the prevailing history of Israel. Problems. And you know, they should have had problems. Now, let's start in Egypt. They were prosperous in Egypt. You know, after Joseph, remember Joseph? Yeah. He was taken as a slave to Egypt. And then after the famine, you know, all his family came and they were in Egypt in Goshen and they had a wonderful place there. But then what happened? There came a, a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph, didn't know the God of Joseph, and enslaved the, Israel, the, the people of God, amen? Amen? Amen. I hope I ain't losing it yet. Amen. Too early. The sermon just starts. Alright? Stay with me. Amen? Amen? Now, so now God's people were slaves in Egypt. And they cried out to God and what did God do? He sent a deliverer. Amen? Amen. Delivered them from Egypt. They left Egypt. Plagues came down on the Egyptians. God showed his mighty power. So they, they, so even though they were in, in bondage for 400 years, now think about it. If you're in bondage for 400 years and you are alive at that time, you have no or little idea of who God really is. Because for 400 years, all you know is slavery. Amen? Your parents would have taught you about God and they would have tried to keep the history you know, in the family, amongst the people. But I've been a slave for 400 years. I don't know what it means. I don't know the definition of freedom. But now we're free. And they saw the power of God. They left Egypt. They were led by a pillar of cloud during the day. A pillar of fire during the night. They came to the Red Sea. Can't go left, can't go right. The army is coming behind them. And God said, move forward. Where God is only water. He said, move forward. They stepped forward and the sea parted. 
They saw the power of God. They went and they were in the wilderness near Sinai. They saw God, the power of God and the thunderings. Amen. Yet they rebelled. Even still, God didn't cast them away. They, they, they murmured against God. They want water. God give them water from a rock. Miracle after miracle. Yet they always have problems. They always complaining. They always rebelling against God. And that has been the history of Israel. Now there comes a time. Now, as a parent, you know you talk to your children. And for those who are not parents, listen carefully. You know, you talk to your children, and you talk to your children. And you know, after a time when you talk and talk and talk, you have to stop talking. Yes. Amen? Yes. Um, most of us are from the Caribbean, so you understand what I'm talking about. Yes. Amen? <laughs> All right. After a time, if you can't hear, you don't feel. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child? Yes. And you know there's another verse that said, if you beat him, he will not die? Yes. When I first saw that, I was amazed. I said, thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. They can't arrest me. I said, the Bible says so. Yeah. All right? But the fact is, God speaks to, spoke to the Israelites time and time again. Yeah. And after a time, God had to say, listen, if you're not going to hear me, there are consequences. Yeah. In fact, right at Sinai, God said, listen, do all these things and it will be well with you. If not, then... There are curses that are associated with your disobedience. Now let's go to, to the, the, the scripture reading. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Now it's one thing for God to speak and you just ignore what he says. Amen? But what, look at what happened here with, these, with God's people. Thus said the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path where is the good way. Now first of all, if God is saying to them, ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way, does that mean that they're on that path? No. no. They're not. So somehow, some way, somewhere, they are veered off the path. Amen? Stand in your ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is the good way? Now, it would also appear that there are different paths. Amen? And... David said in Psalm chapter 1, Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now, that's another path to be on. Walking in the counsel of the ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, sitting in the seat of the scornful, and it may well be that this is where, this is the path that God's people were on. Because, you know, God had given them judges to rule over them. He was king, he gave them judges, and they ruled the people. But no, they didn't want that. They wanted a king. Give us a king. And God said, well, you want a king, I'll give you a king. Give him Saul. Eventually Saul rebelled, and they had, to, and they had wicked kings and good kings and wicked and that was the history of God's people because they weren't satisfied with what God gave them. Not only were they satisfied with what God gave them, they didn't even, they weren't even satisfied worshipping him because they went and they took the gods of the heathen and were worshipping them as well. So God had to say, listen, stand here in the ways and see and ask for your paths where is the good way and walk therein. If you do that, he said, you will find rest for your souls. Mm -hmm. So they were in a state of unrest. Mm -hmm. They did not have rest. And God said, this is what you need to do. And what is it they, they answered and said unto God? What did they say? We will not walk therein. Like I said, it's one thing for God to say, do this, and you just ignore him. It's quite another for God to, to give an instruction and you just and you blatantly say to God, no God, I ain't doing that. I fear to say that to God. Verse 17 says, also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. Now, whenever with 
Israel, with God's people, when the trumpet is sounded, usually it's because the enemy is approaching. You, you, the enemy is approaching, you know, you're living life, you're, you're planting, you're, you're working, you're doing all these other things, you're living life as usual, which is okay, but when you hear the trumpet, stand up straight, look around, something is happening. Yeah. And God said, I set watchmen over you. Why did God set watchmen over them? To keep them safe, amen? To protect his people. Yeah. Because God loves us, he loves us, his, his people. So he's not going to leave them in a, a state of, of, of being vulnerable to the enemy. He said, watchmen over them. And God said, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. No, like I said, when you don't hear, after a time, you're going to feel. Verse 18 says, Therefore hear, O nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, this is verse 19, Behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. You see, when God is talking about the old paths and the good way, He is talking about being obedient to him. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. He is talking about being obedient to his word. He is talking about being faithful to his law. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Because once they have stepped off of the path of that path, then they are on the path to destruction. Yeah. But you know, I love God. Don't you love the Lord? Yeah. You know why I love the Lord? God makes it hard. For us to be lost. Yes. Now, 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 there's a, 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 a passage that we might, that is often used, and we might think that, well, I don't know, brother, if it's that hard to be, to be, to be saved. You know, it's more easy to be lost because, you know, the, the Bible says, straight is the way and narrow is the path that leadeth unto life, but broad is the way that leads to destruction. and Few find a narrow path, but more find the broad way. Is it because it's harder to be saved? God places stumbling blocks in our way. Yes. When you're going the wrong way, God places stumbling blocks in your way. What does it say? What does it say in verse 21? Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them, the neighbor and his friend, friend shall perish. God places stumbling blocks in our way to prevent us from going headlong into destruction. Now you remember Paul, who, or rather Saul, who was persecuting the Christians? God said to him, why are you... When, when, you know when God arrested him and stuck him on the path to Damascus and he, he blinded him, God said to him, well he said to God, who, who are you Lord? He said, I am the one you've been persecuting. He said, Paul, well Saul, because he ain't changed his name yet. Saul, why are you kicking against the pricks? You know what he's saying? You're going headlong down destruction way. I put in stumbling blocks in your way and you're just kicking them trying to go headlong. God is saying to us, and I am saying to you brethren, it is easy to be saved. Yes. It is harder to be lost. Yes. You know why? God puts obstacles in your way when, you, when you're going down the way to destruction. He puts obstacles in your way. God said he would rather you be saved. He said, I don't want the light in the death of the wicked. And I am wicked, brethren. We all are wicked. You know why? The Bible says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. I am wicked. My natural heart is wicked. Our natural heart is wicked. There is nothing in us that will naturally cause us to worship God. There is nothing in us that will naturally cause us to want to serve Him. You know why you even come to church? It's because the Holy Spirit has caused you to come. The Holy Spirit? It's not because I just wake up and I say, Lord, I want to come to church. It's not because I say, Lord, I just want to serve you. The Holy Spirit, day by day, moment by moment, is saying, come on, wake up, bow your head, pray, serve the Lord, turn to Him, turn from your wicked ways, 
And it's only as we listen to the Spirit that we do those things. We can come to the point where we do as the Israelites and say, we will not walk therein. We will not hearken to your voice. And brethren, when we get to that point, we want a preference. This is not going to be a long story. Because there's nothing much that has to be said. Amen? We need to hearken unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. What happened with the Israelites in this passage? This was a, a prophecy because they were going to go into bondage. They went into bondage, Babylonian bondage, because they would not hearken unto the Lord. Now, was the bondage because God didn't love them anymore? Was the bondage because God did not love them anymore? No. no. They had to feel. They had to understand that when God said there are consequences to disobedience, yeah. that they had to feel the consequences of disobedience yeah. because he said it before and they were rejecting him. When they outrightly said, we will not, that is rejection of God. Mm. And brethren, continual rejection will cause us to commit the unpardonable sin. Mm. Now you know what happens if we get into unpardonable sin? That is when the Holy Spirit stops telling you, go to God. Now think about it. Because my heart is wicked, naturally I don't want to go to God. So the, and the only reason I go to God is because I'm responding to the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We got that? Yeah. If the Spirit continues to speak to me and say, go to God, and I say, no, I will not. Go to God, and I say, no, I will not. You know what? happens after continually doing that, no, the voice of the Spirit becomes softer and softer and softer until they can't hear it anymore. And the only thing pushing me to Christ now is silent. So when he is silent, will I go to God? No. It will not happen. And you know, that is why people will be lost. It's not because you've sinned so much and you've done all these bad things that, you know, all my sins cause me to sin, cause me to die and perish. It's not because of these sins per se. It is because you refuse, we refuse to respond to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who tells us to confess our sins to God. So it's not the sins per se. But the fact that we are not responding to the Spirit who is telling us to confess. We are not responding to the Spirit who is saying, come. We are not responding to the Holy Spirit who is saying, leave this world behind. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you a question. What's, what's the point and purpose of walking therein? What do the Israelites refuse to do? Why should we walk in therein? Now, Recently, we've been having a lot of disasters, mm -hmm. natural disasters, all right? We had, what, two Category 5 hurricanes within a month? Within, well, within weeks of each other. With two weeks, all right? And, and uh, didn't they say that there, you said three? And didn't they say that this is a historic, these are historic storms because it hasn't been like this before? In how many years? In a hundred years, okay. Category five. Two of them are category five. Right. A couple of days ago, earthquake in Mexico, where I was, I was saying, they said um, 155 buildings collapsed. 123 buildings are partially collapsed. And this, there was a school that collapsed with oh, well, about 30 children dying. Now, brethren, these things are happening more and more, more and more. And the Spirit of Prophecy tells us, tells us that these destructions are God calling us and telling us, people, get ready. I am coming soon. Jesus is saying, I am coming soon. She calls them judgments in the land. I don't know why. One of the countries, Barbuda, 
almost it was almost 90 percent destroyed completely destroyed I don't know how many people how many thousands of people lost their homes and brethren when now the thing is when 9-11 happened it shook us amen when Sandy happened in New York it shook us amen but right now think about it do you feel shaken by those things anymore no you know why because we forget we forget when we are in danger and in trouble and in these troublous situations after a time we forget but God is saying to us don't forget don't forget the times that we are living in we must educate ourselves to be thinking and dwelling upon the great scenes of judgment just before us and then as we keep the scenes of the great day of God before us when everything shall be revealed it will have an effect on our on our character now I think this is a, an account that Sister White that happened with Sister White and a, and a young fellow it says one brother said to me Sister White do you think the Lord will come in 10 years what difference does it make whether you'll come in two four or ten years that's what she said to him why said he I, I think I would do differently in some things than I now do if I knew the Lord would come in ten years then she said what would you do why said he I, I would sell my property begin to search the word of God and, and try to warn the people and get them to prepare for his coming and I would plead with God that I might be ready to meet him then said I this is his wife if you knew that the Lord was not coming for 20 years would you live differently and he said I think I would in other words if the Lord was coming in 10 years he would sell his property search the scriptures and get ready but if the Lord was coming in 20 years he wouldn't do that he would just continue living life as usual until he knew the Lord was coming soon and my, my question to you brethren is how are you living how are you living how am I living? Mm. Are we living thinking that the Lord is going to come in 20, 20 40 years? Yeah. Are we living thinking that the Lord is going to come in the lifetime of our children or grandchildren or great grandchildren? Or are we living as if the Lord could come tomorrow, today? The fact is, brethren, how many of the people who died in these um, yes. hurricanes yes. or earthquakes knew they were going to die? How many people, how many people know when they're going to die? Some do, but many don't. Most of us don't know when we're going to die. And the fact is, brethren, unlike what some religions would say, nobody can pray for you. Why are you in the grave? No. Well, yeah, well, let me take one now. You can pray for them, but it's of no effect. It's not going to help. You can't ask God to forgive the man who is dead. Forgiveness, brethren, only is for the living. I cannot ask God to forgive you and if you just live in your life, not responding to the spirit what's going to happen you want to not be forgiven i must ask god for myself you must ask god for yourself i can ask god that you will respond to him but brethren each of us must individually respond and it can only happen while we are alive what is uh, uh proverbs 9 the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything they don't know anything they can't pray to God. They can't come back and haunt you, brethren. They can't go back to their homes. They can't worship God. The Bible says so. It is only for us, brethren. We must ask God for forgiveness now because tomorrow is not promised. You know what the Bible says? James said that life is a vapor. You know what a vapor is? It's, it's, it's like a mist. How many of us can hold on to a vapor? I'll put it in a pocket. Can't do it. It's a mist. It's, it's transient. You can't even hold on to it. And God said that is what life is. Life is fragile. We can't keep life. 
when life is going from us? How many of us can stop death when it comes knocking? We wish we could, but we cannot. Amen? We need to be ready. We need to get ready. And whether you come to church every Sabbath or you don't, there are many who are even in the church who are not converted. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So this is for all of us. Yeah. Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, the fact that he's coming doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. And the thing is, we have to ask ourselves that question. Does it matter? Because Jesus gave everything for us. Everything. There's nothing that heaven could have given more than what was given in Christ. God gave everything in Christ. Do we understand what that means? And the thing is, you really have to sit down and contemplate what that really means. Jesus is God. Amen? Amen. He became man. Now what kind of madness is that? God, creator. Because John chapter 1 says that Jesus was the one whose hands created the world. Amen? We know that. Yes? If you don't know, go to John chapter 1. Amen? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14 said that, um, um, all everything that was made was made by him, which is Christ. Amen? The creator came in the flesh of the created so that the created, you and me, would not be lost. He gave up divinity to become humanity so we can be saved and not be lost. All that belonged to him, he gave up so we could have it. And he took upon himself what we deserved, which was death. And we need to come to understand all that Christ did for us. The fact that he did that, brethren, means he loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. He loves us with a love that we cannot comprehend. He loves us with a love, brethren, that we can never repay for him for. And you know what he says? You know what all he asks? Just come to me. Leave this world. Leave the things of this world. And come to me. And we, we, we act like the Israelites. And we refuse. We want the idols. We want the, the things of the world. We want all these things because we we just foolish. And that's the only way to say it. And I say it kindly. <laughs> we are foolish. You know why? What is it that we give up when we come to Christ? Tell me, what do we give up? What do we give up when we come to Christ? There is nothing in this world. There is nothing in this world that is more valuable than Christ. Amen. Now the thing is, you know, sometimes you go to church for so many years that it just becomes a thing that we do. Amen. It becomes called formalism. But brethren. We need life again. Amen. We need life again. We need the Holy Spirit in our hearts again. And if He's never been there, we need an introduction to the Holy Spirit. Amen? You know why? Because, let's go, to, go back to the scripture reading, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, where is a good way and walk. Therein, and what will happen? You shall find rest for your souls. Brethren, 
I work hard. How many of us work hard? You know, on your job. Listen, we live in we live in New York. You live in New York. You work hard. Amen. Some people who work day shift, night shift, boat shift. We work hard. I never. I don't think in Trinidad they work so hard. When you come here, yeah, you work hard. You know in the Caribbean. You know in the Caribbean. Um, you know the lights turn off. Yes. You know that the shops close yes. at, a, at a certain time when it get dark. You know by ten o'clock, everybody in, in bed. All the shops, stores close. Right? New York never sleeps. And 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 the thing is, brethren, we work hard. And what happens when you get a day off? Rest. How many of you take off the phone? The one nobody to call. Don't text me. Let, well, I, I, I don't, I'll let me talk for myself. Don't call me. Don't text me. Well, I don't do Instagram and all those things. Let me rest. Amen. Sometimes I say to the wife, "Look, dear, keep the children in that room. Let me go in the other room." Amen. Some, you need to rest, brethren. Sometimes when you work so hard, when you're so weary, you need rest. And brethren, how many of us are weary from sin? I'm weary. From sin, brethren. I want rest. I need rest. Don't you want rest? Brethren, the only way to get rest is in Jesus. The only way. And that's all He wants to give us. He wants to give us the very thing that we need. The very thing that we want. He said, Look, I have it right here. Take it. It's yours. But like the internet, we will not walk. Him. And you know something? The problem, one of the problems with, with the Israelites, they were deceived, you know. Let me, let me tell you why they were deceived. Verse 20. To what purpose cometh there to me incense from Sheba and the sweet cane from the far country? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sacrifices sweet unto me. So let me ask a question. Israel was saying to God, we will not walk therein. We will not hearken to your words or to your voice. But what is this verse suggesting here? They still um, burn their incense to God. They still offering burnt offerings to him. They still offering sacrifices to God. So what does that mean? They still go to church. They still go to church. And they're not just going to church and sitting, you know, some, you know, it's easy to judge people, amen? Yeah. And God says you shouldn't judge nobody. Right. It's easy to judge people. You know, a person sitting down in the back seat who just come to church, sit down and go home. Come to church, sit down and go home. Don't, they want to do nothing. And it's easy to say, oh, you know, they never want to participate. They never want to do this. They, never, they ask them to do something, they always refuse them, right? But these are the people who are actually doing something. Yeah. These are the leaders, some of them, because the priest is the one who has to offer the incense. It wasn't the regular person. They offered the bone sacrifices. The priests offered the incense. So from pastor down to the man in the back who ain't doing nothing, offering incense to God while refusing him. So when you see the Bible saying, talking about those who are refusing God, it's not the man on the fringes. It's the regular one who comes to church. And you know what the Bible says in the New Testament? It says, Many will come and say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this for you? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do all these things in your name? And what did God say he would say to them? Depart from me, ye that work in iniquity. I never knew you. You need to say, I come into church all of this time. And God could possibly say to me, I never knew you. Lord, I mean, at least say, I used to know you, but now I don't. Or, I kind of have an idea who you are, but you don't look so familiar now. But God is saying, I never knew you. Might as well have go party every Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. Might as well go and drink and, and smoke weed. Yeah. If God is going to say to me, I never knew you. I spent all this time. I give up my, my tithes and my offerings. Uh, I come to church. 
I leave my family home and I come and do this. We come together and we have social and AY and all these things. And then all, with all of that, God will say, I never knew you. Mm-hmm. Brethren, it's not about coming to church. No. It's not about all the things that we do in church. Because sometimes some people do these things for sure. Yeah. Or because they think it will bring them into the kingdom. Yeah. Nothing you do, brethren, will cause you to be saved. Yeah. Nothing you specifically do. Yeah. Preaching is not going to save preacher. No. Singing is not going to save the sinner, the no. singer. No. No. Playing piano is not going to save the pianist. No. Brethren, the only thing that's going to save us is Christ. Amen. That's the only thing. Amen. But brethren, guess what? When you save, when you understand all that he's done for you, yeah. you know what happens? Yeah. When you understand, something happens in your brain. It's like, Lord, what kind of transaction is that? Mm-hmm. That, that, that wonderful, majestic transaction where you took my place and now you've given me the opportunity to take yours. You know, because Christ said he wants us to sit on his throne. Amen. Brethren, that's supposed to excite you. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is saying, I want you to sit on my throne just like I sit on my Father's throne. He's saying, you're no longer strangers to me, but but heirs. You are heirs, children of God. Does God, do you, for parents, do you know your children? Do you know your children? Of course you know your children. Do you know your family? Yes, you know your family. So if God is saying to the man, I never knew you, it means you're not family, you are stranger. Yeah. Brethren, I don't know about you. I don't want to be a stranger to God. Amen. I want to be a child of the King. Amen. Amen. That's what I want. Amen. And God is saying, it is possible. It is possible. But brethren, many of us are weak. Many of us, instead of being overcomers, we have been overcome. Mm-hmm. Instead of being strong, we are weak. The humblest and weakest, by persevering effort in resisting temptation and seeking wisdom from above, may reach heights that now seem impossible. Mm-hmm. These attainments cannot come without a determined purpose to be faithful in the fulfillment of little duties. It requires constant watchfulness that crooked traits shall not be left to strengthen. Sometimes brethren we're lazy and we are lackadaisical when it comes to our lives and our characters. I just say it clean. The Lord said he wants a people who are without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. God says you need to be holy just as I am holy. I have to be as holy as God. That's what God says. I want you to be as holy as I am. And we think it's impossible, brethren. A lot of preachers preach and say it's impossible. The Bible is saying it is possible. The problem is, we try to do it on our own. We try to be holy on our own. And God said, no, that don't work. Let me into your heart. Amen. Amen. That's it. Yeah. That is the key. That is the key. When you ask, when you let God in, because He will never bust the door down. He ain't ha- it ain't happening. He knocks. Yeah. Will you let me in? And He keeps knocking. Will you let me in? Will you let me in? Because the Lord said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. You think you're weak? You are. By yourself. But with Christ within, there is nothing that can overcome you. Everything is possible with Christ. Everything. The Bible says that. With him, all things are possible, including living the life of an overcomer. Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. Everything is possible. But brethren, it requires one thing from you. 
let him in. Amen. Amen. You let him in. And don't resist him. Don't resist him as he works in your life. Walk the path that he's laid before you. The Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You need the word to keep the path lit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's keep on the path. Amen. There's a song. Well, first, the judgment is set. The books have been opened. Amen. 
how shall we stand in that great day? That's the question. It's a question I have to ask myself. It's a question each and every one of us have to ask ourselves individually. How shall I stand on that great day? Am I going to be counted as one of God's children? Or am I going to be counted as a stranger? And that's a very real question, brethren. It's a very real question and it will be a reality to each and every one of us one day. And we don't know that today is promised, the rest of this day is promised. We don't know that tomorrow is promised. And there is going to come a time when God is going to say, He that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. And brethren, that day happens either when you die or when the door of probation closes. We can't play around. Amen? 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 We can't play around. Because the devil ain't playing around with us. I guarantee you that. He's not going to play around with us. I want to be saved. You want to be saved? If you want to be saved, raise your hand. The Lord takes record and He sees that you want to be saved. If you are weak, you know you're always being overcome by sin. Tell Him that. And tell Him you want Him in your heart. We ain't qualified to be pastors and preachers and all these things right now. All we're saying is, Lord, enter my heart. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for, your, for the blessing of life. The blessing, O oh Lord, that we have to still be able to call upon your name. Father, we ask that you forgive us for rejecting you as we have in the past. <coughs> forgive us, O oh Lord, for turning a deaf ear to your voice as you have, when you have spoken to us in the past. And Lord, I ask that right now that you enter our hearts. Lord, we know you are our hearts door knocking. And right now, Lord, we ask you, please, enter our hearts. Father, you know who we are. You know our lives. You know our history. You know where we are right now. The secret things of our hearts, Lord, you know it. <coughs> so, Lord, we are asking that you will cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. Father, we are weak, but, Lord, you are strong. Yes. And we are asking, Father, that your Holy Spirit will enter our hearts and make up the difference where we are weak. Lord, we take steps forward in your direction along the path that you have replaced before us. And we're asking, Father, that you give us the strength to continue to move forward. Father, some have come to the front. And we ask that you will touch each and every one of their lives. You have something in store for them that we don't know anything of. You have something in store for them, Lord, that you know you will give them the power to accomplish. And then, dear Father, we know that there may be some in the congregation who did not come forward. I ask their Father that you touch each life in this place, Lord. Whether they have the courage to come forward or not, Lord, touch each life. Empower each and every one of us, Lord, to do great things for you. Because, Lord, we love you. We appreciate the death of Christ on Calvary, Lord. We appreciate the sacrifice made for us, Lord. And we want to serve you. We want to do your will. We want to do everything that you say we should do. And Father, I ask that you will save us all when you come. Let none, Father, in this place be lost. Lord, not even our families and those who are dear to us, Lord. Every connection that we have, Lord, of every person in this place, touch their lives so they can too be saved, Lord. Lord, we don't want to be saved in your kingdom alone. Lord, I want my family to be there. I want my friends to be there. And Lord, I know that is the same that every one of us wants there, Lord. Save us, Lord. Save our families. Save our friends. And Lord, help us to walk on streets of gold and live eternally with you. Lord, let us not be so connected to the things of this world that we are afraid to let them go. Because you have so much greater in store for us. 
So bless us, we pray. Let today be the first day of the rest of our lives, our changed lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.